Hello, this is Mike from Windows 7 Forums. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a Paragon Backup and Restore image of a hard drive using Bare Metal Backup and Restore. A Bare Metal Backup and Restore is superior to any other type of backup and uh, superior to any other type of restore because when you are performing the backup and when you are performing the restore, the operating system is not on and the computer's resources are completely dedicated towards backing up your system or restoring your system. Now what we're looking at here is the computer management Microsoft management console and under that management console we have a list of the disks on our system. The first disk is our primary operating system. It contains the system reserve drive or partition and it also contains the C drive which has all of our files. As you can see it's a boot partition and a primary partition. Now we've also installed a 20 gigabyte hard drive. This could be a removable hard drive, it could be a physical hard drive on the system, or it could be an external serial ATA drive. It could even be a 1394 Firewire drive, it doesn't really matter what type of drive it is. Nonetheless it's unallocated, it has no files on it, and it contains nothing, absolutely nothing. So there are two ways we can go about this. We can go to the computer management console in Windows and we can format this drive and create a new simple volume. But let's just say we don't do that. Maybe we don't know how to do that or we don't want to do that. We don't want to use Windows. We're going to go straight to Paragon. Paragon is a commercial application which allows you to back up and recover your operating system files and entire drives. There's no need to actually run the Paragon software on your system. As a matter of fact, you can create a burnable DVD which allows you to create bare metal backup and restores. That is what we're about to do in this presentation. We will begin the process of doing a bare metal backup. I will show you how to do this now. What we're going to do is restart the computer. We are then going to boot from the DVD that we have burned, which was supplied by Paragon. We are now in the process of booting our system. Every BIOS is different and every motherboard is different, but usually in order to access the boot menu, we hit F12 or Escape. Most motherboards today require F12. Some of them require escape. In VMware, the virtualization service we're using to do this demonstration, we have to hit escape to boot from CD. And that is what we're about to do now. Now, as you can see, we've successfully accessed the boot menu. And what we'll do is hit CD-ROM. We have the CD-ROM or DVD-ROM in the drive and we'll see a familiar loading screen. Now we're not actually loading Windows in this instance, we're loading the Paragon Windows PE Loader which is based on Microsoft technology making it in my opinion somewhat superior to the Acronis backup which is another commercial solution and we'll see the very similar and familiar Windows Vista boot up uh, screen I can assure you we're not booting into Windows Vista, we are in fact booting up into Paragon and the reason why we use Paragon as opposed to Windows backups is because it tends to be quite a bit more reliable. And right now we're initializing hardware. That hardware initialization process is detecting all the drives on your system. Anything that it can find to use as a backup source or a source of information uh, for recovery purposes. And once again, we have a license agreement to agree to, accept. And now we are at the main menu here. Now, of course we would like to do a backup, but we can't do that yet. And the reason why is because we have an unformatted uh, drive, a raw drive with no partition, and it needs to be formatted. So we go to the full scale drive backup pro. And here we once again see a somewhat familiar screen where we have Drive Zero, which contains all of our pertinent information. Windows, the files on Windows, 
etc. And then we have our unallocated disk with nothing on it, 20 gigabytes. What we want to do here now is click on the unallocated portion of the disk and create a partition. Now, just say we didn't want to do that and we wanted to create a exact duplicate of this disk. We in fact could do that by copying the hard disk itself. Okay. We would copy drive 0 to drive 1 and it would create an exact copy of that disk which could be swapped out the boot order could be changed and you could basically have two copies of the same operating system running on the same hardware but that's not what we want to do because it's a big waste of space and we can probably get our our 20 gigabyte drive here with windows on it down to an 8 gigabyte archive file that we can restore at any time and that's what we're planning on doing here so we go to the unallocated portion of the new disk and we create the partition we'll let it be a primary partition NTFS and we'll call it backup. We apply these changes immediately this is a step that has to be taken and the drive is automatically quick formatted as well so you don't have to worry about formatting the drive it's actually now ready um, for files to be backed up on it. Now here's what we're going to do we're going to exit out of the full suite here and just go to the backup wizard. We initialize the backup wizard. We select again basic hard drive zero. This is the drive that we want to back up. It's a 20 gigabyte drive and the estimated archive size is 8.1 gigabytes. You can try to tinker around with some of the options to change the backup size, etc. and so on, but these are pretty much the optimal settings. Trying to create a 100% compressed backup will result in a very long backup time and it's not really worth it. You might as well just go with the default settings. Now we have several ways we can backup the data. We can save it to a, a FTP, which is File Transfer Protocol Online. We can save it to a local or a network drive or we can save it to a CD or a DVD. What we're going to do right here is just save it to our local drive, our new drive we've just installed. And here it is on the list and the only reason it's on the list is because we just formatted it. And again the estimated archive size is 8.1 gigs. We can change the archive name to anything we want. So let's call it My Windows 7 Backup. Okay, and that's, that'll be the folder that it places this backup in. We won't really leave any comments. I suppose we could put uh, test bare metal backup. And we'll go to backup now. And of course here's a summary, blah blah blah, so on and so forth. Who cares, whatever, it works great. Next. And what's going on right now is the data is being written. It's being done very quickly. And the main benefit of what we're doing here is that Windows, again, is not on. It's turned off. We're booting directly from a DVD or CD. And we are getting an exact copy of everything we need. There is no files that are in use that might not be backed up properly. And it's a complete and utter backup. And we'll speed things up a little bit so we can get to the nitty gritty in one second.